Hey, it's Kithran, and this video, as per the title, is about building a new ship. Now, I've already done, as you can see on screen, the uh, customization of the look. I mean, let's face it, that's the bit that is really down to personal preference. You know, there is no rules that say, oh, you've got to have X, Y, or Z. So, uh, that bit I've just done off camera because it isn't really relevant here to this uh, video. Because what this video is about is how to actually fit the ship, bridge officer abilities, how to change those, set those up, etc. How to actually set up the ship once you're in space. So, start off. That's the ship. That's ready. So, I've also already done the just transfer gear over from my old ship. But I'm going to go through everything I've got on here and where it comes from, which is, uh, you know, equally important for us. Because there's no good saying, look, you see, this is a brilliant design. And you've got no clue where to get anything from. So, let's have a look at the ISS Buzzsaw. As you can see, it's a uh, T6, T6 ship, the uh, Terran Adamant Heavy Raider. Now the first thing you may notice here, if you haven't really been looking at uh, T6 ship stories, you've got this Starship Mastery Unlock bit here. What that means basically is the more you use a ship, the better it gets. So, for example, use it a little bit, you get plus 5 accuracy, then you also get plus 5 defence, plus 10 kinetic damage, plus 10 energy damage plus 15 critical severity and at the end here wild weasel now the final bit here wild weasel that's actually a starship trait that can be slotted in and it's basically character wide so you know you can then use that ability on another ship if you want as long as obviously you plug it in up here but anyway let's uh, get back to the ship that's the mastery now the important thing, the actual gear. Let's just go through this. It's a lot. This is going to be the simplest way. So to start with, phase quad cannons. Now these, um, the Terran Adamant Raider comes with agony phaser quad cannons. The phaser quad cannons. These came from the legendary uh, Reliant pilot warship. It's another T6. Uh, that I was flying before I switched to this one and I switched them over main reason I switched them over, the Agony f uh, cannons are nice uh, the difference is, is they don't do all their damage up front they do a bit of their damage as sort of an ongoing damage over time effect trouble is yeah, this 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 design, well as you can probably gather from the name, is designed to just blat things quickly so therefore, something that's dealing damage over time, well, ideally, it's going to be dead before that damage over time has had a chance to fully apply. So, that's why I switched that over. But that's where that comes from. Next up, the Quantum Phase Dual Heavy Cannons. Now, these are the first of the stuff that comes from missions. So, in the episodes, in Future Proof, you've got Sunrise. So, the Quantum Phase Dual Heavy Cannons, they come from Sunrise. And there they are there. If you're using Beam Arrays, yep, there's also an equivalent Phaser Beam Array. Now, the thing you'll notice with this is it talks about part of the set Quantum Phase Catalysts. And it says another item in there is the Console Quantum Phase Converter, which, as you see there, also comes from the same mission. Now, what that set does, if you go to more details, you see, obviously, you know, these are the stats on the actual weapon. And then, because we've got two of them, two of the items, 15 accuracy rating, doubles the potency of quantum phase weapon shield drain. Um, I don't have the torpedo, so the final part of the set benefit doesn't really affect. But yes, I do indeed 
you look down here in the engineering consoles, nope, uh, there it is. In the science console bit, or even, I put the quantum phase converter. So, yep, I do have both parts of that set. The other three item, uh, the other three ones are well, actually these came from someone in my uh, the fleet of this character who had some spares. Um, but basically, these are sort of mission drops and the like. So they're they're nothing special, you know. Sort of that's just stuff that would have been found basically so that's the four weapons next up deflector and this again it's uh this time it's part of the quantum phase application set part two or three and again oops. more details is what I actually wanted to click on that and uh, Again, because we've got two items in this set, in this case the Resilient Shield Array and the Deflector Array, we get 2.5% extra maximum shield capacity and reduces all energy damage to shields by 7.5%. Where does that come from? Well, that comes from the next mission on the list, Stormbound. Um, so we see here the quantum phase deflector array which we have and as I mentioned the quantum phase resilient shield so again that's two of them the impulse engines I don't have will go on to what engines I've got next but uh, again a couple of them came from the same mission and in case you're wondering yes it is literally just run that mission again you've got the replay button there if you click on it, you get this screen and you can accept or decline. And basically, you'll get to do that mission again if you're wanting to. So, next up is the Impulse Engine. And I've got the Bajor Defense Hyper Impulse Engine Mark II. And again, it's part of a set. If we look at the details on this set, it increases the phaser damage. Um, also disruptor and plasma damage so if you were using those, either of those types of weapons again it could still be useful but yeah another, just another two and a half percent uh, phaser damage is the reason I went for it and where does this come from well again it's a mission it's a different episode though it's new frontiers rather than uh, future proof and Let's see, I've lovely uh, Skillis and Chabadis. I've almost certainly butchered that, but that's where it comes from. Starfleet. And in case you're wondering, yes, I am just pausing it till it gets uh, rid of the uh, waffle that you get uh, whenever you uh, click on the mission just to make the video. So it's not, I'm not sat here in silence or trying to speak over uh, the game. So, the Hyper Impulse uh, engines are there. Also, if you are happening to be using plasma weapons, there's a plus 30% plasma energy weapon damage uh, tactical console here, which would be great if you're using plasma weapons. Um, I'm not, so <laughs> there you go. And next is the warp engine, the Bajor Defense Hyper Injection Warp Core. This is part of the same set. Now, this is the exception to the rule where we're saying, you know, sort of all this stuff is coming from the is coming from missions. This is the one thing that's coming from somewhere else. Now, where it's coming from is a Phoenix Pack, and at the moment they've got a special event where you can talk to owner on DS9 um, I've already done it on this character to write saying come back tomorrow but if it was uh, if it had reset there'd be a middle option there to get a free Phoenix pack now I think yep there it is in a Phoenix pack you'll get a token could be rare to epic epic is woohoo I've got a free ship um, 
But I think the pers the, the chance of that is something like 0.11%. So not really a high chance. But if you get an ultra rare token, which I've actually gotten quite a few, there is the beta defense hyper injection warp core. You can get it from here. So that's where that came from. Uh, that didn't actually cost any Zen. Um, the Phoenix packs, like I say, at the moment you can get them. They've got an event going where you can get a free one every day, or you can actually buy them with refined dilithium from the uh, dilithium store. And you see, they're four and a half thousand refined dilithium each, or forty thousand for a pack of ten. I only ever get a pack of ten if I'm getting them, but that's just a. Uh, and no, and actually, I got I've gotten about thirty or forty packs, I think, in total across all my characters. Um, so that's where I got the token to get that warp core. But that's something that I mean, if you look at how much uh, dilithium I've got, I've got three hundred ninety thousand, or I've got one hundred fifty-seven thousand refined. So I could buy almost 40 packs now if I was wanting to without having to do anything. So it's certainly, you know, easily within reach of people that. Anyway, on to uh, the gear. Next up, Quantum Phase Resilient Shield. Um, I already covered that. That came from Stormbound, the same place we got the deflector. Uh, next, the Aft Weapon. Uh, there's only a single aft weapon slot on the, this particular variant of the Define. And the Trilithium Enhanced Phaser Turret. Now you'll notice this one is Mark 15 and Epic. That's because I upgraded it. Um, there is an upgrade event on at the moment. I'll briefly, once we've uh, finished going through stuff, I'll show you how you can upgrade stuff. But it comes, like most of this stuff, as a very rare Mark 12 item. And the mission it comes from is once again in New Frontiers. We recently received a distress. Alright, so yep, it's this mission, Beyond the Nexus. And there you see Trilithium Enhanced Phaser Turret. And again, likewise, if you're using beams instead, there's a uh, omnidirectional phaser beam available as well. And once again, here this is part of a set where again I've got two parts of it. And if I have two parts of it, 5% fi uh, firing cycle haste for energy weapons and plus 15 flight speed. As you see, what I've been trying to do with this is where I'm picking up gear, I'm trying to also get a bit of an extra benefit by taking advantage of sets as well. Uh, one thing to be aware of. Although you've got the beam array and the omnidirectional beam array and the turret, if you have both of them, that still only counts as one item in the set. To get the set, you need one of those two plus the torpedo plus the console to get the three piece benefit. Or if you're just wanting the two piece, you need one of the two and, say, the console to get the two piece benefit. You couldn't get it by just having the turret and the omni. So be aware of that. But the console, as I said, I've also got. That's down there in the engineering consoles. Basically because it gives us uh, those little bit of extra benefits. I mean, the console itself is quite reasonable. Power transfer rate, improved hull capacity and hull restoration. Um, this is a fast, nimble, little, nippy ship, but can be quite squishy. So that's quite useful. Next is the experimental weapon. This just comes with the ship, so nothing special with that. Um, red matter capacitor device. Uh, you can see what it does. I click on it, I get uh, plus 25 to all power levels for 20 seconds. So it's a nice little boost. And again, this is something that I got from a token in a Phoenix box. I think this is... is he, I can't remember, it's either rare or very rare. It's not the same ultra rare level as the uh, warp core. 
Um, consoles, so the engineering reinforced armaments, already mentioned where that comes from. The House Martok defensive configuration, Mark 12. Uh, you see what this does hit points, shield, and engine setting, more shield capacity, better turn rate. This is part of a set, but as you see, I've only got one part of that set. And that comes from Starfleet Intelligence. Right, and this is from Brushfire. So it's a mission before beyond the Nexus. And the difference here is it's not a choice the actual console, it's just something you will always get. Um if you were interested in getting the set, um you've got the omnidirectional disruptor which is obviously good if you're going for disruptors rather than phasers. Um, as one of the choices, you can actually get two parts of the set from just running the mission once, which is uh, actually quite nice. There's also a torpedo if you're going for torpedoes. Next up is Neutronium Alloy Mark 12. Again, this is just a, uh, a drop during a mission. Um, just makes me a bit less squishy. Always useful. Uh, the science consoles. Um, I'll just swap that one out actually. I've got the universal quantum phase. Uh, converter. Um, what was there? There was something else there, I'm sure. I think I need to go to manage starships because I think it's probably on the other ship. De -de 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 -de. If I just wander in here, uh, nope, that's acquire ships. This is manage ships. Should somewhere have the quantum warhead module? Hmm. Now oh, there is. Yes, I do have the quantum warhead module. Okay, so I've got the agony redistributor on there anyway. I must have left that on there. My confusion. Yep. So the agony redistributor. Um. This is, it used to be a really good module, it has recently been nerfed. I'm probably going to re long term replace that with something else, but it comes with this particular ship. Uh, the quantum phase converter, we've already covered. Quantum warhead module, this comes from the uh, legendary um, pilot warship. I've just swapped it over, it can fit on here. And again, this is part of a set. So the uh, the quad cannons are part of it, and the quantum warhead module. Um, just gives us a little bit of a boost to cloak. This ship actually comes with a cloaking device built in, whereas the other one didn't. You had it as a separate module, which is why I've not bothered to bring the module over. Then I just have two cloaking devices not really much point so I'm saved the console slot that way um, but yeah basically it uh, it lets me uh, you know if I do want to do the whole you know, sort of go into combat cloaked and then uncloak and just open up it makes it more effective and finally tactical consoles these are all exactly the same there's five of them they all add plus 30 phaser damage and the source for all of those is once again a mission. The Lucari have discovered. Yep. Once again in the New Frontiers arc of signs and portents. And one of the choices is the tactical phaser relay. Um, 
Yes, I've won this quite a few times to get those. I've also actually picked up these two traits. I don't actually use them, but I figured they'd be quite useful. The main reason I was running it then is because I had endeavours to kill Zenkethi on the ground. And there was Zenkethi on the ground at the end of this, so it was a good option for me to uh, pick those up. So yeah, that is basically all the fear of this ship. So then we need to worry about traits. Um, and the main thing is starship traits. So we want to tweak these ever so slightly. Main reason is, at the moment, I am using um, rapid fire with cannons. Um, and I want to switch this to, can to cannon scout and volley. And the main reason is, is there's this withering barrage trait. Extends the duration of cannon scatty volley by 4 seconds, which near enough means that you've got cannon scatter volley up basically all the time. And that is powerful. Now, you notice I only had 4 trait slots, and they're all in use. And they're all actually quite good ones. So, what I'm going to do is use one of these experimental ship upgrade tokens. So, if I hold down control. I can drag that over there. I only want one of them. I'll go back to the ship. Now, you can only do it at Starship Selection, it says there. So I better go over to the Starship Selection. And I've got the choice to upgrade. And it upgrades it for this ship class for the entire account. So what it does, it adds a universal console slot, a new device slot, and a new trait. Now, as you saw, I had a number of uh, um, those tokens. Now, again, you can actually get those at the moment th from the Phoenix store as part of the event. Uh, five ultra-rare tokens can be used to get a single Starship upgrade token. Similarly, there's a... Uh, you can use um, 20 very rare or 100 rare tokens to get an upgrade one. So it's possible to get those upgrade slots without having to spend Zen and it's probably the most efficient way of getting those upgraded or getting those upgrade tokens if you need them but anyway we've done that so now I can go back to traits I've got an extra trait available here which I've selected withering barrage I'm not going to bother faffing around with anything else these extra slots here as well well, certainly the Starship Traits, uh, Space Reputation, these can all be unlocked at the uh, Fleet Research Lab. These ones, again, actually, yep, yeah, all of these can all be unlocked at the Fleet Research Lab. So, that's something I'll eventually be doing, but it takes time to build up the Dilithium and the Fleet Credits to be able to unlock all that sort of stuff. So... This is a lot quicker to get that extra slot using that upgrade token. Next up we've got stations. Now this is where I'm going to have to be doing quite a bit of fiddling. Because, well, I know what I want to be using. I want to be using Candle Scatter Volley. Um, to ping in here, this tactical seat is a tactical intelligence. To ping is tactical but doesn't have the intelligence specialization. This C is Lieutenant Universal Temporal Ops, so it can be any uh, career path. Ensign Universal, Lieutenant Commander Universal, and Lieutenant Commander Universal. So I've got a lot of flexibility as to what I have. The only thing I've got to have is I've got to have some sort of tactical officer in here.
Now, I do have Lita, a photonic uh, tactical bridge officer. Yes, that is Mirror Universe Lita. Um, you can actually get her also with her Dabo outfit. But I've got her um, with the Mirror Universe outfit. Uh, she comes from, again, the Phoenix Tokens. But anyway. If we change that to... Lita. Then we need to go over to Lita and have a look at what skills she has. So. We know... We want Cannon Scatty Volley. And the first rule of thumb is if you're using any fire mode at this sort of level anyway. You know, you can get more specialised builds where you might not be following this rule, but generally if you're using an attack mode, you want the best version of it you can have. So Lisa would want Cannon Scout Volley 3. Now Cannon Scout Volley is not something you can buy uh, from the normal trainer. Basically it means you've got to go to the exchange or you need to get the book. Now, one thing you can do all these bridge officer counters you can get, you've got the option to create manual. And what that means is if I click on create manual for this character I can use it to create the skill book for any of the skills that he's got so for example if I wanted to get viral matrix 3 I could get it that way and I've actually done that on one of my other characters to create a Canon Scatter Volley 3 book which means we can now go into Lita I need to promote her up first because It's a commander level ability. And now I can click on learn. And select it. And now she's got Cannon Scout Volley 3. Now, Torpedo Spread 2 is going to be a useless ability for us. Beams Fire at Will is going to be a useless ability for us. So those two I'm definitely going to want to change. Surgical Strike might be useful but this is our primary weapons sort of damage option what we probably want instead there is attack pattern beta 2 um, chemocyte laced weaponry would probably be nice but this is a uh, one we'd have to buy, so I'd have to see how much that is. Um, that could be fun. <laughs> override subsystem safety so as you see what it does basically increases power levels um, decreases about how much you're actually getting and at the end something goes offline basically you just let's just override the power and just ramp it up to beyond max and then there's a bit of uh, a consequence from that But that's basically going to be something I should be able to get um, from the normal trainer rather than having to buy on the exchange. Maybe intelligence team at the lowest level. So basically. Let's have a look, see if we can get hold of Chemocyte. Q. 
chemo site. So yeah, you see it's ironically more expensive to buy the lower level version. Um, it's about eight million to buy the training manual for that. So yeah, I think I'm probably not going to bother getting that yet. I've only got 25 million totals, and that's going to be a big chunk of it for just a single skill. Yes, it's quite a good skill, but at this current stage, I've not got the uh, money. So if I take the turbo lift up to Ops, around the back of Ops, we've got the Bridge Officer Trainer. Click on the store. So... Pattern beta 2 was what I wanted, so I can get that. And then under intelligence space, okay. So the overload subsystem safeties is not actually one that I uh, don't oh, There it is override subsystem safeties 2. Woo! Excellent. And finally, I want Intelligence Team 1 at the lowest level. So, if we go back to Lita, and Skills, she can learn Intelligence Team. I'll make that once the active one. She can learn override subsystem safeties too. I can make that the active one. And she can learn attack pattern beta 2. I'll make that active. Now, one important thing I've changed all these skills here. If I go to the ship and look at stations, it's still what it has before. You need to click on here and say reload default, and then it will change. Now, I'm not going to bother, because this video has gone on quite a bit, I'm not going to bother going through all the other ones, setting them up um, on video. I'm just going to pull, I'm going to get it done, and then I'm going to go back to it. Okay, so, I've finished sorting out the, uh, the stations, so... Quickly going over what we've got. We've got Lita with Cannon Scatter Volley 3, Attack Pattern Beta 2, Override Subsystem Safeties 2, and Intelligence Team 1. And these two are from the Intelligence Specialization that she has. Uh, we got Cameron with Tactical Team 1. We have the Geordie LaForge Hologram with Directed Energy Modulation 1 and Emergency Power to Engines 1. We've got Scarvin with Emergency Power to Weapons 3, Reverse Shield Paral Polarity 1, and Engineering Team 1, the 23rd Century 1, because he comes from then. And Tomet has Photonic Officer 1, or 2 rather, Tractor Beam 2, and Hazard Emitters 1. Reason why I swapped some of these characters in? Well, both Cameron, if we look at these traits, and Georgie LaForge have leadership, which is a trait that affects when you're in space and gives hull regeneration. So, the previous uh, bridge officers I had there only had ground traits. So, this basically mean, means that they're... Uh, they give them us some benefit that we didn't have before. It cost a minimal amount of expertise and uh, cash just to train them with the skills I needed. So that's all done. But that's sort of the bridge and the fittings. So we've got one thing left to do. And that's to head out to the ship.
and set up all the abilities. Now the first thing I want to do is just set weapons to maximum. So I've got those abilities that are because this is an intel ship. Uh, we've got all this sort of stuff we need to put in because at the moment we've got nothing set up so I know I want photonic officer available This is just a click on when it's available. Battle cloak when available. Uh, this is from the uh, warhead module. And basically, it's sort of a one shot. Fires six torpedoes and then recharges over time. So it's not something I want to be just uh, on the span, yeah, sort of on my constant uh, keep up, but uh, it wants to be available. So we've got our three beacons for calling in reinforcements. None of these need to be in the device slot, so... Fleet buff. Uh, intelligence team. All my heels. Fleet support, that's another call in the extra ship, so that goes with these guys. Evasive maneuvering is my get out there. Actually move hazard emitters over a bit. Hull heel. Always useful. Emergency power to weapons. Diversionary tactics. Brace for impact, normally you'd think this is a heal. But, because of traits, I'm getting a 15% bonus all damage for 15 seconds. So basically this is part of my keep up all the time. Tap pattern beta. It basically removes their damage uh, resistance. So it's uh, quite useful. Uh, tap pattern alpha. Again, gives bonus to damage and critical and everything. So it's worthwhile having. I just want to go through and make sure that I've got everything. Some things like this Class F shuttle, it's you know sort of pointless having on the spam. Oh uh, yeah, sort of on my combat uh, thing. Already got that. Individual weapons. I'm just shooting everything all the time. Uh, 
these ones I've already got up here so I'll leave those in place throw my mark I've already got, fleet support, focus frenzy Uh, fighting intelligence fleet intelligence team you route power to various places reroute shield polarity that I do need So there I've got my hull heels and my sh shield heel. Tactical fleet. That's another fleet buff. That's actually already in there. That's a normal sort of weapon. That's the special one. Our tractor beam I've not yet got. think that is everything in there. So there we go. It's now ready near enough for uh, combat. Although because I've got this extra slot here first thing I'll be doing is going to run uh, a mission to get yet another one of those to go in that slot initially because well that's not going to hurt at all. And there we go. Sorry this has gone on for a bit, but it's one of those. It takes a bit of time to get everything set up type uh, things. And I didn't really feel it would make sense to split this into a couple of videos over a couple of weeks. Um, after all, that isn't how you'd be doing it in real life. You would be doing it sort of all together. So hopefully you found this useful. And I'll catch you next time. Kiffin out.